Hey guys, welcome back. Today we are going to be working with our dahlias today. And I am sharing with you my top 10 dahlias for this year. It's something that I like to do every year. I don't know if I did it last year though. Here I am saying I like to do it every year, but I didn't do it last year. But anyways, I like to share my top 10 favorites or my like top five favorites. These are the ones that I have been really paying attention to closely this year. What I would like to do is curate a collection of my favorites and share that out with you guys every year because as we change, our taste also changes. And that is the same thing for me and Dahlia's. I might love something this year, but I might not like it as much next year. But it changes every year and I kind of refine and fine tune everything that I like and I don't like about specific Dahlia's or varieties or forms. And this year, I really wanted to broaden my, my color palette because I tend to be a creature of habit in this sense. I'm not truly a creature of habit in other ways, but in this, I really love the softer peachy, like light pink tones. Those are the tones that really speak to me. What I want to do is not just think about the ones that I love, but also think about what I think would be really great for you guys. A lot of you are into deeper tones, uh, like reds or dark burgundy. Uh, some of you are really into yellows. So I wanna be able to create a cohesive collection of my favorites every year and share that out with you guys. Now I've been keeping notes throughout the whole summer of the ones that I really love and are doing really well because I don't want my favorites to only be color driven. I want it to be driven also by how they perform, uh, their vase life, what is the plant like, uh, would this be a good contender for a landscape? So we're going to cover all of that with the top 10 varieties I'm going to share with you today. That way you can start thinking about which ones you want to add to your cut flower garden, which ones do you want to start incorporating in your landscape, especially if you don't have a designated area for cut flowers. I want to give you some varieties that you can plan out in your landscape. They're going to be beautiful. They're going to just perform their little heads off. And I think you're really, really going to enjoy these. And the other thing I want to keep in mind is not sharing just the unicorn varieties. When we talk about unicorn varieties in the Dahlia world, those are the ones that are going to be a little bit harder to find. They might be newer to the market. Um, they're not readily available like some of the other ones are, but I do think the ones that I will talk to you guys about today that were introduced this year will become more readily available this following year. Now this will become a great list for you to reference, especially because there are going to be a lot of great sales coming up. A lot of farmers that I order from typically start their sales in the late winter, early springtime. So that's usually when I do my ordering, but there are other farms that are starting their sales right now in the fall time. So I wanted to get this video out to you just in case if there are varieties that you see today, you can start doing some research and thinking about where you're going to order them from and just kind of be prepared. So let's walk around and cut the top 10 that I really love and recommend for you guys this year. And then we will talk specifications and a little bit more about the actual flower. All right, starting out strong, we have Cinder Rose. And let's cut a couple of these, that way you can see them at different stages. So this is K.A. Cinder Rose. This was bred by Christine Albright and it was a new variety this year. It's a miniature formal decorative. The plant is about three feet tall and the blooms are about three and a half inches wide. The color variation on this one is very interesting because it starts out kind of a pinky mauve color, but ours is pulling in a lot of yellow, where other ones I've seen pull in a lot more of that lavender color. And if you just hold it up to the light, you can just see these little reflections of that really pretty lavender come through and it almost gives this kind of a glowing effect and I just think it's beautiful. I've used it in several arrangements and although it is a new variety and this came from a cutting, I am so impressed at how beautiful this one is doing. It's also pumping out a lot of blooms. In fact, I took a cutting from a cutting and I planted it on the other side and it's also doing really well. I'm hoping because it was new this year, it's going to be more readily available next year. And for a lot of the Christine Albright varieties, I usually order them from Stonehouse Dahlias. They sell cuttings and we can talk more about that, how, how, what the difference is between growing from a tuber and a cutting, what you should look out for and all those things. But this will definitely remain 
on the top of my list for, I think, several years. All right, next up is K.A. Kelty Rose, and this is not a new introduction, but she is new to my garden, and I absolutely love her. K.A. Kelty Rose is a formal decorative, and the blooms are about three to four inches wide. I do notice that they get bigger as they start aging, and the actual plant is about four, four and a half feet tall. This dahlia is so breathtaking with its soft blush pink petals that gradually deepen to a rich rose, creating kind of a gentle ombre effect. What I like about its form is it has these really sweet layers of delicate ruffled petals that give it almost a romantic airy quality. It's definitely one that's very versatile in bouquets and it is such a good producer. We have been getting so many blooms out of this one and I do love the stem lengths. Obviously I'm cutting them a little bit short just to show you guys but she does have nice strong stems. I think this dahlia is stunning. She will definitely remain in my top favorites, one that I can see myself growing forever. She's just very timeless and beautiful. I adore this dahlia so much. Next up, we have Skipley Spot of Gold. And funny story about this one, I almost didn't buy this dahlia until I spoke to somebody at an in-person sale who was selling it and she was just telling me how it glows and it was definitely something I needed to have in my garden. It's a formal decorative. It's about four feet tall and the blooms are about three inches wide. And I am so happy <laughs> that I listened to her because she is quickly becoming one of my favorites to cut and design with. I think this one would also look very beautiful in the landscape. She's definitely a contender I would consider for the landscape just because the blooms are just so striking. And when you see it from far away, it just draws your attention. And I think it's probably because the little specks of gold and yellow at the tip of each of the petals. The tips almost give it a sun-kissed appearance. And again, I think that's why I really, really love this one. She's been such a great producer and just has a really beautiful, playful look to her. Let me just give you kind of a close up of that one. Just look at how gorgeous that is. One of the things I've been really loving about this one is it's pulling in a little bit more yellow and that pink color to it is kind of being faded just a tad bit and there's just a little bit of a color shift. And you will notice that with your dahlias, especially as the temperatures cool off, they tend to shift in color just a bit. So if you have a variety that looks a little bit different than it did Oh, I don't know, in the beginning of summer when they started blooming, that's completely normal. So anyways, this one is just such, such a stunner. Next, we have Clearview Peachy. And this one has been such a workhorse and a favorite of mine. Let me just cut a few stems over here and I'll bring it over to you guys for you to see. All right, this is how she starts out with and then she starts getting bigger and bigger. Look at just how beautiful that is, and this is a ball variety, and it just has the perfect petal count and that really beautiful round ball shape, which is probably my favorite form of dahlias. And this is what she looks like when she starts to fade. She is a stunning blend of soft apricot and peachy tones, creating kind of a warm glowing effect. Again, because it is a ball variety, it just has that perfect rounded bloom that are just classic in my opinion. The other great thing I love about this variety is it just offers an incredible balance of rich color and elegance, making it essential to any cut flower garden in my opinion. And it looks beautiful in floral arrangements and bouquets. As far as performance goes, this is probably one of my best performing varieties this year. She just puts out a lot, a lot of blooms. The stalks are beautiful. The stems are nice and thick and just very rigid. You can see, even though this is a very short stem, it's just very, very hardy. And because this plant does get very tall, I would probably keep her in a cut flower garden. However, if you want to put this in your landscape, make sure that you stake it because with these taller varieties, they tend to be a little bit more tender if you have like a wind gust, especially towards the end of the season. But I absolutely adored this variety. Just one more time, just look at that. How can you not find this to be perfection. Next up we have Omega which is such a showstopper and one that surprisingly just stops me in my tracks every single time I see this variety. How can you not stop and admire 
these beauties. I mean, just look at how big they are. This is a lacinated variety. The inches or the blooms are about eight inches across, which just tells you how huge these can get. But the actual plant is only about three to four feet tall. So talk about flower power in a small, compact size plant. Omega is that girl. As far as color goes, it's a stunning blend of soft pink and even like a little bit of that lavender tone with the yellow coming through the petals, just almost like stroked. It almost looked like it was stroked with a little bit of paint in each one. And it's just beautiful. The reverse too has just beautiful coloring, very uniform. Probably wouldn't use this in a lot of arrangements just because with these bigger varieties, it is a little bit challenging to arrange with. However, I like to use this one on its own. So if you just like a single flower, like bouquet or just an arrangement, these are the perfect flower. I do the same thing with our cafe au lait. I think cafe au lait plays really well with other flowers. And of course it's always that it's my top three favorite flowers, but I don't want to mention that one and take away from the other ones. But anyways, this one is right up there as far as the bigger blooms, which ones look really good in a vase or even in an arrangement. Very good stems too, especially if you consider how big that flower is. Now again, it is a larger flower. However, I do think because it's not as tall, it would be a beautiful flower to have in the landscape. And I just think it's gonna stop you in your tracks every time you see it. And it's just so, so beautiful. I really do love this flower so much. Like, how can you not? Like, look at how cute we are. I love her. And even when she's all blown out like this, it still is very beautiful. Obviously, once they get to this stage, they're not going to last very long uh, in an arrangement or in a vase. But how can you not enjoy this? This is absolutely beautiful. And just look at that all together. <laughs> beautiful next we have bracken rose which is a dahlia that exudes classic charm with its soft rose pink blooms delicately shaded with a little bit of lavender undertones she is stunning if i could grow five dahlias for the rest of my life this would be one of them <laughs> the perfectly symmetrical fully double flowers have such a romantic vintage feel to them especially with these layers of tightly arranged petals I think this is why I'm so drawn to this one. So these plants get about four feet tall. It is a ball variety and the blooms are about three inches across. One of the things that I really like about this Dahlia is it blooms continuously. It's constantly putting on blooms, very reliable, very abundant, and just absolutely gorgeous. So one other thing that I wanted to mention, if you are somebody who wants to get into the cut flower world or you want to become a florist or sell your blooms and you want to kind of cater to that sophisticated color palette this is a dahlia that you want to grow and have available for your customers she is easy to work with her blooms are not too big but again it just has a very unique color color variation in this one and i think if we're talking about high-end floral design this is a dahlia that i will always use in those situations it's such a beauty and i think people when they see her they admire her and i definitely want to grow several more plants of this one and start growing my stock and she is not she's not super difficult to find she is very popular um but she wasn't like a new introduction or anything like that so i don't think you'll have a hard time locating this one next up is rock run ashley and there's a reason why she's on everybody's must-have because she is such a stunner she is one that i think a lot of designers gravitate towards and use and cut flower arrangements again going back to if you want to get into that world of selling flowers growing ones that have this kind of color tone kind of that peaky or pink salmon-y um, range of color is I think is what's going to be very popular and it's going to make you stand out from say you know the grocery store bouquets which are beautiful in their own way but I think when you use color palettes like this it's really going to set you apart from those types of bouquets. She used to be very sought after and more challenging to get but she's more readily available now which is really great. The whole plant is about I would say four feet tall. It's a formal decorative variety and the blooms are about three inches across now these are actually pulling in a lot more yellow and pale colors than i would like 
to share with you. I'll see if I have any pictures of them uh, earlier, earlier on in the season because they were a little bit more pink, a little bit more salmon. But again, with those cooler temperatures coming in, they just tend to fade a little bit, which is fine because I think they're beautiful in their own way. But here is what she looks like up close. So you can see she kind of starts out a little bit tight. And as she opens, the, the petals just start reflecting back a little bit. Again, classic to that formal decorative form. And this is how she starts to age. Really good vase life on this one, good plant. I would also consider having this one in the landscape because the size is good. She puts on a lot of blooms and the blooms are not that big. And again, with a four feet tall plant, I don't think it'd be a bad contender uh, for your landscape. Next up, we have Bloom Quest York, which is definitely not a dahlia I thought I would love as much as I do. It's a informal decorative. The, in or the blooms are about six inches across and the plant is about five feet tall. Look at that color. This truly looks like a work of art in person. Let me go ahead and cut a few more blooms so you can see. I don't think I have any ones that are too close to being open, but man, does she age beautifully. Like she starts out very tight, but even when she starts opening up like these, oh, she looks gorgeous. Just look at that rich, beautiful, rusty red ombre color. I cannot believe how stunning this dahlia is, especially in person. In terms of bloom, it's very, very vigorous, especially because it's such a tall plant. I am surprised at how many blooms she puts out. And the other thing I really loved about this dahlia is it has these darker stems, which is always something that I'm drawn to, just because anytime you can have interest, even in the stems, makes for such an interesting flower, especially when we talk about arranging with. I love this dahlia. Now this is one that I would probably have in a cut flower garden, not necessarily in the landscape, unless you're going to stake it. Again, it gets about five feet tall. This one seems a little bit taller to me and it just has these really long, beautiful stalks. It's not as bushy of a plant. Obviously you can accomplish that by pinching it, but if, even after I pinched it, it's still really open, which is stunning. But just keep that in mind, if you're gonna put this in your landscape, I highly recommend you stake it at the time of planting so you don't have any problems with it. But it's very sturdy, so I, I honestly don't think you would. I just wanna, gosh, I just wanna cut all of these because they're so, so beautiful. So if you're looking for a red, but you don't want like a, you know, bright red, but you want to have some sort of red in your, in your garden or in your cut flower, I would highly, highly recommend this one. All right. Here is one that we've talked about previously. And I've shown you guys her in a previous video, but this is Dahlia Venus and she is a colorette. She gets about four to four and a half feet tall and the blooms are about three to four inches across and she is a show stopper. How can you not love this dahlia? Now, typically colorettes don't last as long in a vase and they don't do very well in terms of transportation. But if you just look at this plant, I know it doesn't have a lot of blooms on it right now, but I'll show you guys a picture of when it did. It just shoots up bloom after bloom after bloom. It almost looks like little shooting stars. This is one that I will transition out of our cut flower garden, but she will go straight into our landscape, especially in a hedge. I think this is going to be very beautiful back planted by something else a little bit taller. Let me just see if I can grab this one over here too. And she is just so beautiful. I mean, talk about consistency. And that is one thing I love about this, um, this dahlia because sometimes collarettes are not super consistent, or at least the ones that I've had um, experienced with, but this one is just beautiful and consistent every time. As far as color goes, it's just a very uniform peachy color with a little bit of pink coming through. And it has these streaks of dark pink on the back side, and I think this is why it's such an interesting and beautiful, beautiful dahlia. Now, again, with colorettes, they don't typically last as long in a vase, but I'll tell you what, I have been loving arranging with this one. 
just because she's so pretty. You want to pick it at very like a very early stage, right when it opens. That way you're going to get a little bit more life out of it. But just look at how look at how interesting this is. Look at those little details on the back side of the petals. It's just gorgeous. I love this one so much. Next up is Bacardi, and she may be one of the most beautifully colored dahlias that I have ever seen. This is my second year growing her, and she just has this almost like a dirty rose, dark raspberry tipped uh, color to it. It has a little bit of yellow on the inside, but more towards the center of the petal. And I think it just has this glowing effect to it as well. It's a formal decorative variety. The blooms are about four to six inches across, and the plant gets about three to four feet tall. Let me just cut a couple so we can look and admire together. I think these two will be the only ones that are blooming right now. But this is how she starts out with. Look at that color. <laughs> are you kidding me? I love how it's dark in the center. It's almost like an eye is looking at you. It's just so beautiful, nice sturdy stems. And I think this one would also do well in the landscape, especially because it doesn't get too tall. I wouldn't say it's a vigorous bloomer, but she does put on quite a bit of bloom. She's not something like a clear view peachy that just blooms and blooms and blooms but she does put out quite a bit, just not as vigorous as some of those other varieties. All right, next we have Barberry Dominion, I think. And I will say she she is a little bit hard to find, not, not too bad, but I had to call her out because she absolutely glows, glows in your garden. This is a formal decorative. The blooms are about four to six inches, although I will say mine stayed on the smaller side. It put out so many blooms, especially in the beginning of the season. She was one of the first ones to blooms. That's why I want to call this one out. I know, again, it's a little bit harder to find, but I think she's worth it. If you can start doing some digging now to figure out where you can order yours from, the actual plant gets about four feet tall and it just has these really beautiful light pink, just very, very light pink color with a little bit of yellow. I'm gonna go ahead and cut some of these. We are at the end of the season, so they're not doing too hot, but when I first saw this one, and again, she was one of the very first ones to bloom, I was just star struck by her. She is gorgeous. She does pull in a little bit of peach, but the color towards the tips are so light and delicate. It almost looks like it's a watercolor painting. And next we have Ivanetti. Now this plant is in my landscape and it just fell over, but I wanted to cut it because she is definitely a fan favorite and one of my favorite darker colors and one that I don't think gets a lot of attention anymore because she was introduced, I think back Oh gosh, I think it was in 1999 and I believe she came from Cornell originally. So that's how she was discovered. It's a ball variety. The blooms are about four inches across and the actual plant gets about three and a half, four feet tall. Ours got a little bit taller just because it was in the area that wasn't getting enough sun. So it was really, really stretching for that light. If you are looking for a darker dahlia, I think this one is stunning. I also like Rip City. I don't have that one in my garden this year, but that's another really beautiful dark burgundy color. This is more of a dark purple. I think it photographs really well. And what really draws me to this one is the shape. I love a good ball variety, especially ones that are so tight in form. And just look at the uniformity on this, how stunning it is. And in person, if you just flip it to the other side, this one is full of water just because we had rain all day. If you just flip it on the other side, you just start to see a little bit of that lighter purple. And I think that's what makes this such an interesting Adalia. She's very, very easy to find. You can order her. Gosh, a lot, a lot of growers have her. So she's not going to be one that's challenging to find at all. But again, if you're looking for a purple, you like those darker, rich colors, Ivanetti should be on your list because she is underrated, but in my opinion, a true, true beauty. 
Well, we went over 10, but that's okay. I wanted to make sure I curated this collection for you guys so you have plenty of variation and options if there's one that you end up not being able to get. And you might be wondering, where's Cafe Olay? That's your favorite girl. Where is she? That's my queen. But I, I didn't include her in this collection because you guys already know I love her. And if you don't know, yes, Cafe Olay would be sitting right over here because she is probably my favorite Dahlia, the one that really sparked that love of Dahlia's uh, in me a few years ago. So if you don't know Cafe Ole, I'll pop up a picture. She is a stunner. She is one that I hope you all have in your garden already. And she is not very difficult to find either. She's very readily available through many, many growers. <laughs> I knew I wasn't going to be able to stick to 10. So you get 10 plus two of my favorites this year that I recommend that I hope I've curated a good collection for you guys to think about if you want to start adding more different types of dahlias into your garden. Again, these are ones that I think are tried and true. Some of them I've been growing for a couple of years and I love the way they perform for me in my cut flower garden, also in my landscape. If you wanna have a look at all of the other varieties that we grew, I did put up a video a few weeks back that I'll link down below in the description box if you want to get more up close and personal about all of the other beautiful varieties that we have in our garden. If you are going to be doing some shopping this year and say you don't get a variety that you really wanted, kind of keep an eye out because there's always going to be a variety out there that's very similar to something. So if you don't find one thing, there's probably another one out there that looks very similar to it. Just like when I think about Clearview Peachy, there's also one called uh, 20th Avenue peach I think and those are kind of similar in color one is a little bit more orange than the other but again don't feel discouraged or upset if you don't get a variety that you're really wanting to get I know that's easier said than done because I get upset about it too sometimes but I always just you know think about it and then I'll try again the following year as sad as it is that the season is coming to an end I've already started to make a wish list of beautiful varieties that I cannot wait to get my hands on, especially after visiting some of our farm friends and looking at their beautiful collection of dahlias. And I just was making mental notes like, I need this one, I need that one too, and this one and this one. So I'm excited to start bringing in some newer varieties again next year that I get to share with you guys. And every year you just, you kind of tweak your collection a little bit, a little bit. And I do want to start selling our tubers as well. So I'm also thinking about what would be good for people to grow in their garden. And I would love for you to share your favorite varieties down in the comments maybe share like your top five ones that you really love ones that I didn't mention that way we can do a little bit more research on and think about um, different varieties that you guys come up with because there's so many different types of dahlias and I think that's why these are such spectacular flowers because I guarantee you there's there's gonna be a flower out there that you like. If you're somebody that's like, no, I don't like dahlias, it's because you haven't found the right one for you yet. I promise you. So put down your recommendations down below so we can all start looking into them. And again, sharing that knowledge, share your experience with some of them. Maybe there's one that you thought you would love, but it was like, absolutely not. Not, not the one for me, but it, maybe it could be for somebody else. So I, I, love, I love being able to, um, just learn more about different varieties, especially again, because there's so many and there are certain ones that you guys have brought up to me and I've never seen them before. And I'm like, what? who is this and why haven't I heard of her? Um, especially because every year there's new varieties coming out and we tend to forget some of the older ones because everybody's really into the new thing. What's the hot new thing? But there's just still beautiful varieties that are like the tried and true ones like Ivanetti, uh, Cornell Bronze is another favorite of mine. There's just, you can't forget the classics. Yes, I appreciate all of the new ones and it's very exciting and I can't wait to discover my own Dahlia one day, but I also like to pay homage to the ones before all of the new it girls that we're seeing every year. So anyways, thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today in my garden and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.